E6, I think, to start. Okay. Good morning, everyone from Calabogie Motorsports Park. Uh, as you can tell, it's, um, it's a cool September morning. I don't know, it's kind, of, it's kind of nice. Very quiet, serene. It's about to get a lot louder during the day. You can see uh, uh, some pretty foliage all the way back there too. Yeah, that's what it's like to race in the fall in Ontario. Morning. Morning. Everyone got a good night's sleep, I think. Our Airbnb is hella nice. So we're ready to kick some ass today. Get those uh, Calabogi uh, locals. And uh, hopefully knew me too. Take everybody down. All in love though, all in love, all in love. It's all love, but we're taking them down. It's a shame sometimes to think about how far away Calabogi is from Toronto because it's such a nice track. In a quick car, about a two minute, 20 second lap and tons of elevation. Uh, a lot of blind corners. In the infield, there's, it's kind of like a forest too, right? Tons of trees. And the facilities are really nice. You can see like behind me, uh, these are like uh, private garages, permanent residences for some of the race teams that, you know, call Calabogie home, uh, as well as doing their, their R&D um, out of this facility. <laughs> First car started this morning, waking up the paddock. It's stumbling in the cold air, huh? All right. Look at all that fog in the distance. It's pretty eerie to look at, but also quite beautiful. Here we have all the pit stalls for all the teams. Everyone's already picking the nice spots, but looks like it's basically gonna be a full grid because I see canopies basically all the way from the front to all the way to the back. I always find it's advantageous to try and get a pit box closer to pit out, mostly because it's always closest to the bathroom. Yeah, being closer to pit out, just less to deal with on the way out. It just really helps to minimize the amount of foot traffic and foot traveling you have to do throughout the day, just getting back and forth between all the places you need to be when you're not in the car. So here are some of our friends, friend team cars. The uh, Tegi EF Civic car is uh, no slouch and definitely not a car that's new to endurance racing uh, as it's previously competed uh, under a different flag. Uh, but now the Tegi guys uh, have it and definitely have made it their own. And over here we have the pretty boy car, the Numi FRS, super fast. Really well developed by the guys over at Nuvi, especially with, with Patrick and with Adam wrenching on this car. Definitely very special. And if you can't tell already, these guys are apparently really big Swifties. A little bit of spit. That'll be good. Make sure it doesn't fall now. No, it won't fall because of the, the wetness. Yes. There you go. Now everyone knows to stay back. You remember the uh, last time you were here? Good times? <laughs> Very good times. Good traumatic, tra traumatic experience. Yeah. We'll roll that clip right now. Oh my so God. you can see what happened the last time he was here. No fault of his. No fault of his. Yeah, so you can tell this is it's a fast track. There's it can get pretty tre treacherous, and you know it's unfortunate that we lost the Civic that way. Didn't really even last uh, a whole season uh, before that happened. But you know that's end of the Civic chapter was the beginning of the RSX chapter. Maybe one day we'll have a facility as nice as this one here, where you can just hang out in a nice heated garage uh, instead of being out here in the cold. One of the unique things about Calabogie is that it does observe a very strict noise regulation and requirement. I believe we have to keep the car exhaust uh, below 92 decibels uh, about mid-rev. And so now we're going to go take the RSX because we got here super late last night uh, when we should have done the sound tech. We're going to go take it now uh, and get the sticker, get the car approved so that we can go on track uh, and go wide open throttle. We're going to do the sound test now. The camera's not moving. All right, good?
Only 80 decimals. That's good. It's a pass. Is that good? Yeah. Good. It's all good. Thanks, Chuck. Go over the two hours then. <laughs> so Chris is now out on grid. It is self-gridding, so it is, if you think you're in the faster-paced car group, it is advantageous to try to get out ahead of the other vehicles just so you don't necessarily put yourself into traffic. So we are gridded up, I think, probably in like sixth or seventh position. We'll start from there, hopefully make a few passes in the first few laps just to get into the very front group of cars and then just settle in for the race. Feeling good? I think so. What do you think? Who are we behind here? We're at P6, I think, to start. Okay. Should be all right. Probably make a few passes in the beginning. I don't know, those Civics look fast. What's that, the Civics look fast? Too. Yeah. Stood up. What's that? Yeah, yeah, pins out. All right, the cars are off for the pace lap. Cars are coming around now for the first pace lab. Somebody's already coming in. Chris is complaining about a uh, low oil pressure reading. Nothing's really changed with the car with the motors in Shannonville, so we think it might be something to do with the sensor. We're gonna send it, see what happens. Hopefully, no issues. We definitely don't want to start the race being a couple laps down just to check over things where we know, you know, oil level's good. And here come the cars to the front straight. Green flag is out.
nervous. Man, you start off the morning with a low, uh, low uh, oil pressure. I know what low oil pressure feels like in my BRZ, you know? So let's hope it stays together. Let's go racing. All right, so the live timing is starting to come through. And it uh, looks like we're still doing mostly the pacing laps. Only at 240 is red, but at least we know that the transponder is working. Yo, how does this thing work? How does this thing work? Am I filming right now? Uh, yo, it's your boy, it's your boy Jason Lee here, the better Jason. I'm gonna show you the content that you really wanna see. Check out this fall foliage though. Forget the racing for a second, check this out. Absolutely beautiful, just look at the fall foliage. Dang, dang, that's the content that people wanna see. We're going around the paddock today, we're gonna find out once and for all who is the better Jason. Jason Lee or Jason Liu? As teammate G-Sung, I got just one question for you. Who's the better Jason? Jason Lee or Jason Liu? Give me one reason why I'm better. No comment. No comment. Come on, man. I need to keep peace within the team. You gotta keep peace within the team, but we all know. We all know. Jason Lee here. Alright, we're with the man himself. Hey, the man himself. The man supporting us all weekend. Yo, I just got one question for you, man. Yeah. Yo, who's the better Jason? Jason Lee or Jason Lee? <laughs> Yo, just point. Just point. You don't have to say nothing. You don't have to say nothing. You don't have to say nothing. You saw it here first, guys. Jason Lee. I'm a uh, two for zero, I think. Just look at this fall foliage. Just look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Look at this. Oh, oh, there's Chris. Here we go. Here we go. He's running a steady 228s at this point. All right, I see Chris come around here. All right, we're about to uh, go into my sit now, sit number two. We're here with Patrick from B-Squared. What's up? The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> if you're trying to up your uh, data game and uh, get some in-car <laughs> coaching, this guy is your man. But yeah, I just dude. got one question, because the people gotta know. What's Who's up? the better Jason? Jason oh, Lee shit. or Jason Lee? Give me one reason. We gonna find out today on the track. Oh, here we times. go, here we go. We gotta put down them times, no black flags. No here mistakes. we go. We gotta earn that, we gotta earn that. Look at that. Look at the other Jason's just chilling. Look at him. He's just chilling, doing nothing. We out here doing stretches. All right, it's Jason here we go. versus Jason versus G Song versus Chris, man. Yes, you already know what's going on. Fucking here we Pardo, go. Baby. Team Pardo, here we go. <laughs> to snap the cable at the pedals. We are now trying to get the throttle cable reattached to the, uh, the throttle pedal. Oh, it's still very understeering. It is just understeering. Yeah, the car just wouldn't give me full power. I don't know, and then it just gave me less and less power when I gave it the throttle. It was really unresponsive, and all of a sudden it just uh, snapped. Let's take out the wheel off again. Classic. That happens. Derek is quite the contortionist over here. Essentially what happened is the, the gas pedal, the cable goes in like this, the piece over here snapped. So what we're gonna do is pull it back in and tighten it with a bullet die. It's like delicate work for delicate fingers. <laughs> He's a trade professional, man. What's up guys, just uh, finished my stint. Uh, they were able to make shift the uh, shifter cable. So, sorry about that. So it's funny because uh, I actually felt the throttle response was much better just tightening up that cable. So uh, the heel toes were much easier. 
I left uh, about three to four seconds in the tank just because, uh, you know, we're, we're sort of out of the running right now for GT1. Uh, given that, you know, we took like, I think it was like a 10, 10 to 20 minute pit stop there just to fix the, uh, the uh, accelerator cable. But uh, I think we're just going to spend the rest of the day setting up the car, making sure it's all good, uh, adjusting the dampening, the tire pressures. I'll swing a lot of rollover on the front left, uh, like turn two, turn three, uh, the uh, descending radius corner, like uh, all those right turns. I felt like the left, the left, front left was just rolling over. So hopefully we can figure it out. Uh, the boys, here we go, Jay. What's that? The Matt, Dan. Oh, uh, yeah. They were on got the yams here. Thanks. Enrique, of course. G Sung's about to hop in the car. Uh, so we're just swapping the uh, front and rears now. And then uh, we're going to do some testing with the goal of uh, going hard oh, yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah.
Team Pardo, let's go. Hey Jay. What's up? So, it's fresh in your mind. How's the car? Um, you can definitely tell the suspension is of a lower quality. It's neutral, but there's not a lot of stroke movement, right? So you're actually losing out a lot of grip because the car doesn't want to load up on either side, left or right, mostly front or back is okay, but the left or right, it doesn't like to load, it doesn't like to soak up bumps, it doesn't like to dig. So it just feels like there's overall less grip, but the car is fairly neutral. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. But just take a we'll look. Out. I think it's like it's fairly drivable for tomorrow. Let's just take a look at the tires. I think we swapped the uh, front and rear, so you can see kind of some of the rollover that's happening on the tire. The bump steer wasn't so bad with the TNs because the arms, the steering arms, are welded on. There's less play, but there's still a little bit of left to left to right movement, making it a little bit dynamic on tow. I raise up the. I think we can manage. Okay, so that is it for race one today. You know, we had a slight mechanical issue with the throttle cable, but all things considered, it wasn't that bad of a situation. It did give us uh, essentially the license for the afternoon just to make it a reconnaissance track day. What I mean by that is we just keep sending the car out, make some suspension changes to Dallin's suspension. I think we got it to a place where it's probably the best compromise with what we've got. Feeling pretty confident for tomorrow. As long as no mechanicals, I think we do have the pace uh, to uh, compete at the front. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, fingers crossed. And we're gonna enjoy the evening festivities at the paddock and uh, at the Airbnb tonight uh, with a bunch of our friends, a bunch of the other race teams. It's kind of the best part of doing these race weekends is just a sense of camaraderie and um, you know seeing these people they haven't seen uh, for a couple of months and just sharing this experience and this beautiful weather out here at Calabogie and we'll catch you later.